Hello everybody and welcome, I'm the Grounded Glasgow, your favourite armor holding PokeTuber of this channel and I want to welcome you to the draft analysis for the Alola International Season 2. Season 2 is finally here, after we have been defeated in the playoffs of last season, we actually started up the new season not too long ago and I finished my draft right now, well my, yeah I finished drafting, some people are still drafting. But I thought this was a great opportunity for me to actually do a draft recap for you guys so you know what we're gonna rock out with in the future videos that you will see. If you're hyped that we are doing another uh, that we are doing another season of the Alone International, be sure to hit the like button and I will talk you through this all at once. This may be a longer video, so be sure if you do not want to hear this that you will skip to actually the draft. Uh, but I will explain what draft we did, um, how it all went down and etc. all that kind of stuff. But first, I want to talk a bit about Season 1 at, at first. Um, we f indeed finished Season 1. We finished 10 in 2 last season. We claimed the highest score in the league. Also, we had Amon in, uh, in the top 3 of MVPs. Nido Queen was there, so thank you very much for that, Nido Queen. Um, and we also finished... Uh, well, we tied actually with... Um, with Jared for the uh, third place in the Alola International, so that is great as well. We tied for the third place, um, which ended up for us working in our favor. Well, I'm I'm still not happy that we were not managed to uh, actually play the finals, which is unfortunate. But I think we still had a pretty good run last season, especially since we became ten and two as well. Uh, so this time we had uh, we did not have a free draft. Last season was a free draft. But this season, um, talking to the admins, they decided to actually do a point draft. If you're not familiar with what it is, I will explain it in a bit. But we will actually do a point draft right here, which makes team, uh, which can make teams more balanced or freaking overpowered by some people in the league. Uh, but I think we had a pretty good draft so as of right now. It's more offensively based uh, of the last season. And most of the mods on here are some I did not use. Yet, or I am, uh, well, I did not use yet, or didn't use them for a long time. Uh, how it all went down, we of course are with 16 people. New people have been, uh, ca well, came into the Alola International. Because last time we were with 8 people, if I'm correct. Uh, and did a lot of rematches in the end and whatnot. Uh, yeah, we were with 8 people. So this time we expanded towards 16, we got 16 coaches, which means that this is going to be a tougher and longer season. We still have 12 weeks, but with different opponents as well. So, now getting into the point draft right here. The point draft, for people who don't know, you get a certain amount of points. And from the certain amount of points, uh, you would be actually able to... Um, you would be able uh, to get some mods like which you are forced to get like 1 tier 1 Pokemon, 1 tier 2, 2 tier 3 Pokemon, 1 tier 4 Pokemon and 1 tier 5 Pokemon. You also got extra points which you can use up which is 400 points to, for starters. Uh, so you can use actually the 400 points to spend on maybe 1 more tier 1 if you need it, a 1 tier 2 etc etc. Just the 400 points is your limit. How you can rise those points is by choosing a lower tier Mega. For example, uh, Mega Heracross in this league would be a tier Mega 3, which will give you 60 points back. Uh, Mega Charizard X will give you uh, 0 points, for as an example. And then, of course, mods like Mega Aggron, Mega Glalie and such will give you 40 points back. Um, so, that inflicted actually also the draft. I did not do a point draft before, so this was completely new to me. But luckily enough, I have somebody at my front office who's actually able to help me with this as well. Because he is, fa uh, he is familiar with some of the mods on this draft as well. And I was kind of hyped of actually doing it. So that's that. Uh, so I will actually get now straight into the mods that we have on the squad. So actually to start off this, we, are, we were indeed with 16 people. And I got randomized to the second pick overall. And we are doing Snake Draft, of course. So, for the people who don't know, Snake Draft is you go from player 1 to player 16. Then you go from player 16 to 1. And then from 1 to 16 and so on and so forth. So, everyone has their mods picked. So, we were a second pick overall. Which means we could have something great and uh, powerful right at the start. And have a double pick. Close to a double pick. Straight up when the pick came back up. Um, so, we picked uh, second. And then we actually went and picked... 
first, I believe, or something like that. I'm not completely sure. Alright, um, so the first Pokemon that we actually decided to grab up is gonna be, of course, the power that I never use myself, Curum Black. We decided the Curum Black. Curum Black has been very offensive, uh, has also the ability to uh, run a bulkier stat, and is just a great wall breaker with Terra Volt, which actually counts as Mold Breaker. Has some great stats overall, you can see it on the graphics that you see in front of you right now. It has base 125 attack, uh, base 125 HP, 170 attack, 100 defense, 120 special attack, 90 de special defense and 95 speed. 95 speed on such a powerful mod is not even bad. 95 uh, speed is going to be manageable to outspeed some base 100 tier megas or even uh, with a choice card. We outspeed even walls. We can be a wall breaker out of the ass if you need be. And I think Huron Black was a great pickup. A Dragon and Ice type, so it's weak to rocks as such. But I'm not completely worried about that one as well. We have the uh, 170 attack, which gives us standard if we do not invest a base. Uh, well, the attack set of 190. And then the special attack is going to be 140. So we are going to be able to run a mixed Curum if need be. Choice Bandit Curum is a threat. Choice Scarf Curum is a threat. Leftover Substitute Home Claws is also a threat. Life Orb can be used. And also, I'm, pro I'm going to use this as my Z user mod as well. Curum Black is going to be my Z user, so they need to prep for a lot of sets. Curum Black is going to be a threat and going to destroy some lives out here. I'm very happy that I got Curum Black, and I know that Curum Black is probably going to shine like diamonds in this league. Woo! Curum Black has been very powerful. I've seen people use it uh, across leagues every time, and I every time I missed it, and I was not able to actually snag it and grab it towards uh, my draft. So this is the first time I actually use Curum Black. Um, very interested in what it all can do and in its damage output. I've been on the receiving end, but not on the dealing end. So this is going to be something fun to actually do, and I cannot wait to use Curum Black. So, now running into the second pick overall, which uh, which I was managed to actually get. I was very nervous to actually get this mod, because I did expected it for people to snipe it from me, because Curum Black was drafted, so I expected people to draft some things to counter Curum Black, because Curum Black can be such a freaking threat. But when the picks came down towards me, I knew that I would be solid if I picked this one. So in the end, I actually decided to grab myself Mega Scissor. Mega Scissor is going to be my second pick for this as well. And it's going to be my zero point um, Mega as well. Which means I do not get any points added to my point total. Which means I will stick to 400 points in general. So, Mega Scissor, of course, is the Technician ability, and just as the stats, as you see, it is just a great bulky offensive mod, in my opinion. Can be defensive, can be a bit special defensive. With Technician, I am not even scared to run a Special Scissor in some occasions. I used it in the past, very familiar with the mod, and just the overall, the options to actually have a U-Turner on the team, which have access to Reliable Recovery, has access to Defog as well, and just Technician, which boosts a lot of moves that it gets in this move pool. It's just very amazing, in my opinion. And it's also the second mod, which I could add to my Dragon, Fairy, and Steel Core as well. Um, I think it's a very good mod. Normally, I would not... Uh, in the beginning, I was not normally a fan of Mega Scissor till I saw the boost in attack and defenses that it got also. And it also is a bit more faster, which allows us to outspeed a uh, bit more bulkier mods as well. Mega Scissor with 95 speed if you do not invest and if you can go for the uh, for the max speed you will go towards the uh, let's see you will go towards the 139 speed as well and I think Mega Scissor on the my uh, um, Mega Scissor on the my on the my doing actually with making spreads as you saw I am more a fan of complicated spreads and I think Mega Scissor is really a, a mod that can suit that well with my playstyle as well. Mega Scissor is just overall as well great because it is indeed, as I mentioned, U-Turn. It can have Acrobatics because it actually does not have an item anymore. So that is also actually going to be great. It has Baton Pass, so I can actually Sword Dance Baton Pass out of there and maybe pass it to Curum Black, which is just going to be amazing. I have indeed a Defog. I have, I have Priority in two moves. I have Vacuum Wave, I believe. Um, and I also have Bullet Punch. I probably would not use Vacuum Wave, but in some cases it may come in handy. We of course have also some other moves which get boosted by Technician as well. So I'm very happy that I managed to pick up Scissor as well. So that's gonna be for my little body right here. Scissor making his return again and I'm very happy I could use it again. 
So moving on to the turret fix right now, I already grabbed my tier 1, so I no, didn't need to worry about that. I grabbed Mega Scissor and I saw that there were some weaknesses going between back and forth between those. Because Kurum is neutral to fire, is weak to rocks, is weak to fighting as well. And Scissor overall is only weak to fire and I wanted to capitalize that on Scissor's uh, weaknesses as well as a bit on Kurum's. And I think a mod that could really suit that pretty well is going to be Arcanine. I decided to grab Arcanine as my third round pick and the reason I decided on the third round for it is because I knew that the rest of the mods I would want were probably coming to me either way as I planned. Um, I did want Sylveon which should have been my third pick but after it got sniped I was like alright I can move Arcanine to the dirt slot and then see from there on out. Uh, so Arcanine right here is going to be uh, great for uh, the pairing with Mega Scissor actually and with Cure in my opinion. Um, we can be, for example, be a bulky defense for Arcanine with Intimidate, take Fighting Moose out of the ass, be able to take Fire Moose with Flash Fire as well, and what is a knockoff to a Justified Arcanine? You do not want to knock this off if you do not know its ability. If you get me and with a Dark Time move and I get a Justified boost, I have an Attack Race and then Arcanine can potentially sweep also with the, ch with the, uh, with the Stab Flare Blitz, for example. Arcanine is, of course, going to have some crazy ass coverage right here like for example it has extreme speed which is also priority which i thought would be nice as well it has uh flare blitz it has wild charge it has close combat it has crunch it has uh it has the fire blast and of course it also has dragon pulse it's just very versatile and it was really something i like also that it has recovery and morning sound is something i would like also and the ability to run actually roar or um or Will-O-Wisp even is going to be great for this. We also can be uh, burn up Arcanine if I really felt like it. But I'm not completely sure. But I think I can. Uh, Arcanine is just really solid in my opinion. Which pairs very well with Scissor. And I'm very happy that I can pair those Pokemons together as well. Arcanine of course as uh, a sort of legendary Pokemon. It has some good stats as well to back it up. It has a really great stats. It has to look at that attack stat. Just do it. Look at the attack stat that Arcanine has and then say to me again that you do not like it. It has a 110 base attack stat and then 100 special attack which are both are very abusable. Being so versatile as Arcanine can be, I can use it as versatile as I want to. And also paired with it 95 speed, it's not even bad. It can go and to, uh, go toe to toe with some defensive mods also and maybe outspeed some as well. Uh, I'm really happy with Arcanine. Pairs very well with Scissor in my opinion, pairs okay with Curum, but I think we can figure it out along the way. So I'm actually going to now move on towards my round four, uh, round 4 pick. So going into the round 4, I actually knew from this moment on that I had an issue against fighting types. Arcanine can indeed take on some fighting type moves, but I knew for a fact that Arcanine would not be able to wall fighting types completely. So I think it was a really solid choice of mine to create a fighting uh, resist core right here. Or a fighting offensive core as well, which can take on fighting types in general. Uh, because there are some dark fighting types running around, of course, in the entirety of the tier list. There are, of course, going to be some other typings as well. So I wanted to create a pair of those. And because, as I mentioned before, Sylveon was actually... Um, Sylveon was actually snagged for me, which I could not pick it, unfortunately. I'm gonna go with the best fairy that was uh, what, that was there after that because Clefable was also gone by the time of this. So I decided on my uh, on the body Florges right here. Florges is of course gonna be as uh, and normally is gonna be the second mon that leaves after Clefable and Selvion is normally the backup for a lot of players. And in this case, it came to me and I could have taken Florges. Finally, because I normally was not able to get Florges. Because normally I would stick with Aromatisse or something along those lines. So we have Florges right here. It's oh, it is great in a special defense. It is base 154 special defense with and then with an okay and HP stat. It has the abilities Flowerville and Symbiosis, or but I do not see me use those as well. Uh, it is of course a fairy type, which is just great overall because I needed the fairy type, and this also completes my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Um, Florges has an okay special attack stat, so I can use that as well for maybe a Calm Mind Florges. I can be a Cleric because I have Wish, I have Heal Bell, Aromatherapy. Um, 
I have a lot of coverage. I have also uh, I have also recovery in uh, in the Giga Drain right here. I have Moonblast, of course. I have coverage actually for days, in my opinion. It also has synthesis, so that is also recovery. And then I have some other fun moves, which I see, uh, which it can pair up with very well. And I think that this can be very good as well. Also, with the ability that I see that it can use grassy terrain, which can help the team as well to reduce the fire type, uh, the ground type damage that we receive. I can set up a grassy terrain, regain health from that as well, and then resist also the ground types that they want to throw at me. So I'm not that really worried more about that. And also then, floor just right here, of course, just is bulky enough for me to be a cleric, which I really like. Floor just, of course, being a great cleric comes with some negative stuff as well. We are weak to poison, we have an immunity for that, but poison types can run fire type moves, so that is bad on that end. Um, we are weak to steel. We are we have uh, some re we have two resistances to that right now. And Curum is also weak to steel. And then we are also weak to wards. Let's see, we are weak to uh, steel. Um, we are weak to steel, poison, and something else. I forgot completely what <coughs> what fairy was weak to. I don't know. But I think Florence was a great pickup on my end, and especially that it fell down to me in round 4 was just amazing in my opinion. So that's that. Florence, welcome to the squad, and let's move on to the 5th pick. So as I mentioned a bit before, was that I wanted to create a um, fighting resistance core. Which means that I wanted 2 mods or 3 mods that, want to pair, that pair extremely well together. Um, and give me some uh, give me some answers towards fighting types as well. So I do not need to rely on the defensive Arcanine at that point, and do not need to rely on only Florges. So I decided actually that I wanted a Psychic type because Psychic types were able to actually capitalize on Poison fighting types, Poison types in general, which also helps Florges out. So I do not need to exist in that point as well. And also, this mod can be a status absorber as well. So I grabbed myself my pal Reuniclus right here. Reuniclus right here. I had experience with it back when uh, I was in my first Wrath League, uh, which was the or which was in Ores, I believe. Or uh, yeah, it was in Ores. My first ever Wrath League I joined. I actually got Reuniclus as well and Mega Scissor in the same team, so they're paired up again. Um, Reuniclus has been very useful in my opinion. It has been bulky enough for me to take actually some good stuff out and it also has the ability to be uh, quite offensive as well. Because if you look at Reuniclus, it may not have the best defenses, but 75 defense and 85 special defense paired with 110 HP is just amazing. Uh, which also means that I can uh, that I can actually make Reuniclus uh, not get dropped by Seismic Toss, for example, if I want to, if I want to get a substitute. Uh, the 125 special attack is just great because 125 special attack means that I do not need to invest as much and just do huge damage overall. Um, as, I, as I said before, Reuniclus is, part with, is paired with Floor just to take care of fighting types in my opinion. And then uh, Reuniclus has some nice moves in his arsenal which are abusable as well. Due to it being a psychic type, it gets a lot of coverage moves also. Also, the ability that it can be uh, that it can be a calm mind juicer also helps. I can also run normal gem explosion. I can run knockoff. I can run dual screams, magic code, nightshade. I can even run um, I can even run toxic T wave or trick or whatnot. I can even set up with acid armor if I want to, and then move on from there. Reuniclus is a very versatile mon, and I'm really glad I'm able to use it. As you know, we faced Reuniclus last season versus Hammer Time Stone. Hammer Time Stone. Uh, showed me that Reuniclus, what Reuniclus actually could do because it was tanking a lot of stuff and I think that Reuniclus under my uh, coaching right here could be very effective as well because Reuniclus indeed is great in my opinion especially if you can EV it completely right and I think I have what it takes to EV it if necessary. So after grabbing my fighting core actually and finish my dragon fairy steel core I actually wanted to focus myself on getting my fire water grass core because I did not was I was not able yet to actually grab that so I want I uh, saw also that I did not have an immunity to volt switch actually and I do not want to get volt switch around because that is really something I would not like and I really want my op opponent to think twice 
about um, what move they should lock themselves into if they're, for example, a scarfed, um, if they're, for example, a scarfed full switcher. Maybe they even rethink the option of being a scarfed full switcher if they see this mod. This mod gains also me an immunity to the most powerful move in the game, which is Scald. Scald is immune to this Pokemon because this mod just doesn't care. It gets recovery. And here it is. It is gonna be freaking Gastrodon right here. Gastrodon, amazing mod, second mod, which add up to my fire water grass core. Really happy that I got that. And Gastrodon has also some great abilities which I could use. Um, like for example, it has sticky hold, which means that if he wants to knock me off, I won't lose my item. I keep my leftovers either way. Storm Drain, I'm immune to water. Boost my special attack, and when you hit me with a water move, I hit you back with a scald as well. And then we have our hidden ability Sand Force, which means that ground, rock, or steel moves do 1.3 damage in Sandstorm, which means if my opponent brings Tyranitar, I can bring in Gastrodon, can use the Sand Force ability if I feel the need to, and then strike back with an Earthquake, or with an Earth Power, or something along those lines, and go from there. Gastrodon is just really amazing in my opinion, and as you see, it has great uh, stats overall in my opinion. It has 111 HP, 83 attack, which is which is usable even. 83 attack is not bad. Now we have 68 defense, which is good for the 111 HP, I would say. One, uh, it has 92 special attack, which is also very abusable. 82 special defense and 39 speed. 39 speed is not that great, but I feel an uneven number like 39. Can come in handy at some points during this season. So we have the 82 special defense and the 68 age, uh, defense as well, with paired with the HP, which is just great overall. Uh, of course, I will be running Gastrodon East because Gastrodon East is my favorite out of the two. And um, uh, what I also love about Gastrodon is that it, for example, gets Clear Smog, which gets rid of Setup, which was actually my aim also. It also gets a lot of other stuff which I do like and I'm not going to spoil that yet. You just must watch the videos if you want to find out what I can do with this monster. Gastrodon. Very happy I could, uh, I could draft it because it has one weakness which is Grass. Which is covered by Arcanine, is covered by Scissor and is covered by Curum Black. And also by some other mods which I have on the squad. So, pretty much, um, pretty much right here. Gastrodon is just gonna be a great mod overall, <clears throat> and I really wanna, uh, I really wanna say that Gastrodon is one of the finer picks of the water ground types in my opinion. Could have grabbed Quagsire, but it's not my piece of cake in my opinion. Could have gra grabbed Seismitoad, but I felt like nah. Uh, I don't, I don't really like Seismitoad on this team, and Gastrodon fits it a bit more. Also discussed it in my front office, and my front office agreed to Gastrodon as well. So next up, we were uh, we were already six picks in, and we're coming to the last five of the squad as well. So coming to the last five, I did not quite know what to actually draft or whatnot. So I wanted to patch some potential holes that I saw, and at this point, I did not see many holes. I did see some, but I did not see many. And I actually wanted to cap uh, actually wanted to grab something that can pair very well with Scissors U-turn as well. So I wanted to complete the other core of Volturn in this case. So me, for rounding up the core of Volturn, means that I needed to grab an electric type. A lot of electric types were sniped and a lot of fast electric types as well. And I did not really need to spend my points on a tier 1 uh, electric type. Because I thought that was not what I needed. So I actually rounded, uh, so I actually looked up what mods that were free. And also talked to my front office. And my front office said to me, you need to grab this. So I, I look at the options and why we should get it and I think it is a very good addition. So let's bring it in for my buddy right here, Magneton. We grab Magneton which is just a great pick in my opinion. Magneton has also amazing abil abilities in my opinion. It has for example Sturdy which uh, if, if, if someone wants to set up and he does not have hazards up, I can come in and for example uh, Thunder Wave it to make it slower so I can deal with it from there. I have Magnet Pool. Uh, which pulls steel types in, which can help for Scissor because Scissor has tr uh, trouble issues. Well, has issues with dealing from with mods like Skarmory, Celesteela, and something along those lines. And also, overall, steel types are just an issue for Mega Scissor, and I do not want to actually rely on Mega Scissor or Arcanine to deal with those steel types only if I have a Magneton. 
Having the ability to vault turn around on mons like in these Carmory or Celestila or other steel types is also great because they cannot switch and just if you can actually notice what kind of moves they have and see what they have you can actually rely on that and make you make a good swap accounted on that. Magneton of Roll Great has two great stabs in my opinion, Steel and Electric type. Gives me some versatility in my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. And I'm not always forced to run Scissor on the team as well if I need a Steel type. Uh, get some fun moves which I can see me running. And I think Magneton has just been a great pick overall. So now we're going to move on towards a other pick right here. We're going to move on to our 8th pick in this round already. And this was also one of the mods. That I did not expect to actually see still free. Uh, it's it's a tier two mon. Um, tier two mon, really good in my opinion. I've used it before, and at this point, I really was happy that I actually managed to pull him uh, to pull her back. She was in season one of the Alola International, and she had such a fun time on our team. So welcome back, Hawkthorn the Shaman. There we go. Shaman came back to the lowland Needle Queens once again. Because she knows what power we can have. And she wants to go for the championship title straight up. There we go. Shaman, powerful. Used it many ways in Season 1. Managed to run its Life Orb with Rest. Managed to run its Scarf. Managed to run its Specs. Managed even to run... Uh, the uh, Managed even to run its Natural Gift. It has so many options. And though with, those, with those base 100 sets across the board. It is just legendary and not just because it's a legendary pokemon because she is legendary in this case because she has so many versatility options she has so many things that i could do as just seed flare which can drop your special defense to hit even harder next turn and it has 100 speed which is just amazing because 100 speed outspeeds a lot of mods if you invest it right shaman has the ability to be bulky out of the ass also so i'm really happy that we managed to actually do that in that regard also Shaman used it very well season 1, looking forward to using it again on this powerful team. So Shaman, thank you so much for returning and making me proud once again. Has been a good tier 2 mon in my opinion and has also the uh, moves to back it up. And also you have the ability to have healing wish on Shaman is great. For example, if my opponent is really weak to cure him and manages to bring it down a bit or status it, I can bring a shame in, wait for it to wear down a bit, and then if I'm low enough and can outspeed, I go go for the healing wish, heal up Curum, and there we go. We're done. Curum is back to full, and Curum can start sweeping again. It is most likely support for indeed Curum for the Uniclus, Gastrodon, Arcanine, just support overall. Also, you have the ability to have uh, also the ability to have Leech Seed as such can help. Also, the ability of maybe running um, of running a offensive shaman with Lee Storm. I've also used a mixed shaman, which was physical as well, which also is the op opportunity to do that. I've also Tillwind used a shaman, and it's just gonna be great. Shaman has just been great, and I'm really proud that she is back. So, eight picks in. Um, now I decided. Well, I actually felt that we were running into an issue right now because. If you watch this draft analysis so far, you notice that I still don't have a reliable way of getting rid of hazards outside of Scissor, and I do not have a way of getting up rocks. And I was really struggling on finding something that could parallel that could fill both of my needs. And there was not much left at this point of time. Uh, a lot of things I wanted were snipe that could set up rocks and get rid of them. Uh, and I also wanted an immunity to ground, if that sounds weird. So I'm not completely weak to it. Uh, but this mon came to me, and of course I could not leave the little guy hanging there. The little guy is of course gonna be the baby of this channel. It's gonna be Gliger. Gliger can set up Steltox. It can defog for me. It has U-turn also, which is just amazing. It is immune to poison. So you cannot poison me because I will wear you down eventually. I can also Swords Dance and Baton Pass with Gliger as well. So I can Baton Pass to Scissor if need be if I do not feel the need to it. I can do it to Arcanine and, and, and whatnot. I cannot wait for me to use Gliger. Gliger with Immunity is great. Gliger with uh, Immunity cannot learn... Uh, 
cannot learn defog unfortunately so we need hyper cutter or something but if i feel like i do not need defog i can go for the immunity glider instead and be immune to the poison either way and be just great overall glider also has the uh, has the option to get carry roost and normally i'm not the guy who would like to want to draft a violet user uh i'm normally against the violet users like uh i do not agree on them like there are some that don't need it like for example magneton Magneton can be great without it, but I feel like a lot of mons actually lose their capability and options uh, Once their Eviolite is knocked off and a good example for that one can be Chansey But Gligar is actually pretty bulky as well still if it loses its Eviolite. It has base 105 defense and With the well with actually with Eviolite boosted his defense will actually go towards a powerful 157 base defense mon which is just great. So it will go base 157 uh, defense. And then it also would gain around um, 97 special defense. Which is great. It also base 85 speed. So it's not even that bad. And I'm really happy. I finally get to use something in the line of the mascot of the channel. Like I've done a couple of league matches. Uh, I've been in a couple of leagues. But I never ever had Glasgow or Gliger in any occasion. Never. So I'm really happy I could draft it and Gliger overall, beast as always. Thank you so much for mascots on the team. Go Lowland Needle Queens with Grounded Class Quest the coach. So now we're going to work the last two picks of this of this season. And I really did not know what to grab. And my front office, we discussed a lot of what to grab. And I was actually really, really confused of what actually I could pick. Um, like I wasn't completely sure on what to do and whatnot. So uh, after talking to my front office, I saw the option that we could grab a tier three or a tier two. Um, the I our uh, so bleh, our eyes fell both on a mon out of the tier two uh, out of the out of the tier three. It can also be a wall breaker. Guess a typing that we did not have and a typing we did have. But what are you gonna do about it? We are gonna bring him back. He was a season one for us for a short while. You saw him in week five, but he is back and is gonna be Heracross. We brought back Heracross, and Heracross is gonna shine for us, in my opinion. It is such a great wall breaker. It has base 85 speed, which does not care because I can slap a choice scarf on it with animate nature, and we're gonna plow through you with that 125 base attack. Stab, Mega Horn, and Stab close combat coming your way have a lot of moves that it can abuse as well it can it can even get swords dance as well and even like what i did before in last season i decided on a fling flame or paracross to cripple my opponent who says that i'm not going to do that this time i can run bulk up um i can run knock off on this thing as well i can run rest sleep talk for example if i feel like it i can also run that indeed the moves that it gets is a mega um can run dig, can also run uh, brain dance if I want to support somebody on the team. Can also run sunny day if need be. Can run work up, venom shock, smackdown. All those moves that sound so great for Heracross, which I cannot wait to actually abuse. Heracross, great mon, and I'm really glad glad we got them back. Also because Heracross is one of my favorite Pokemon. If you did that, no. Alright, so after Heracross, we had a wall breaker, and the last one is actually a toss up of what we actually would grab. And I was not really sure, and our front office had already determined what I should grab, which would be the best for the team. And he decided that another Wish Passer, Wish, sorry, wish Passer would not be uh, terrible. So, the front office and I decided eventually to grab the last one, which is gonna be Licky Licky. Licky Licky has overall been good on last season, not on my team though. Uh, Lady Emma Sky, the champion of season 1, congratulations again, has used Licky Licky in the past and she also told me that Licky Licky has uh, been good whenever she brought it and Licky Licky uh, can indeed have Wish and whatnot and also has, the, uh, has a decent HP paired with defense, special defense. It's also good for weather because there are some people that run weather like for example if I look at the rosters right now I see that some people drafted uh, months like Tyranitar like uh, Alolan Ninetales, Pelipper, um, 
Politoed and whatnot. All those mods which we compute which we could abuse Cloud9 for. Um Mega Obama Storm has been drafted also. Um and for example, also mods like Mega Garchomp has been drafted. So a lot of mods that can be capable of setting up weather at this point of time. Um so actually um Licky Licky was not what I expected to draft, but I think it will suit me well. It is quite fat. Like literally. Um but I think that it could be well as a wish passer if you want Flora just to actually take a uh, um, a week off. Uh, so this is actually going to be the team you will see at the end screen. Well, you see right now all the months that we have been drafted. And that is going to be our team for Alola International Season 2. I hope we are actually going to be able to come as high as last season. And this time aim for the championship. And, and go actually for the title. Because that is really something I would like. Um, because, um, I think we are capable of doing it, not gonna lie. Uh, because, well, we proved it last season, we are not to be taken lightly overall. Uh, so why not try to prove it at the same time yet again. But either way, this has been me for the Ground of Glasgow, coach of your Lola Nino Queens. And I want to thank you all so much for watching the draft analysis with me. I'm the Ground of Glasgow, and I will see you in the next video, whatever I'm gonna make. I will see you next time guys and I'm out. Bye! Bye.